Hey guys! So, Miss Heather here, and we are going to be reading The Lemonade War by Jacqueline Davies, and hopefully you've been following along. Today we're going to be reading Chapter 5, and so as you know, if you've been reading with your family or individually, or maybe you've been watching our videos, every chapter starts out with a business term. And so today's chapter is titled Competition. Now, normally when we think of competition, we probably think of competition amongst our siblings or maybe competition in sports, um, activities like that. Um, but today's word has to do with competition amongst businesses. So it says competition is a noun, rivalry in the marketplace. So that just basically means that there's competition amongst different businesses to see who can sell the most. And so we know that Jesse and Evan right now are not getting along very well. And so we're going to see what sort of competition maybe uh, these two are into. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Hopefully you're following along. Dinner that night at the Treskies was quiet. So the explosion that followed seemed especially loud. It was Jesse's turn to clear and scrape the dishes, Evan's turn to wash and stack. Evan looked at the pile of dirty plates on his left. Jesse was ahead. She was always ahead when it was her turn to clear, but tonight it felt like she was taunting him. To Evan, every plate scraping sounded like, can't keep up, can't keep up. Evan was scrubbing the casserole pan. When Jessie stacked the last dirty dish by his elbow, then she stuck her hands under the faucet to rinse without even saying, excuse me, and shook her hands practically right in Evan's face and said, so how much did you make? That was it. He couldn't hold it in any longer. Why'd you do it, huh? Why'd you have to ruin the one thing I had going? For a second, Evan wasn't sure if he meant the lemonade stand or Megan Moriarty. In a mixed up way, he meant both. And there was no way he was going to tell Jesse that after paying back his mother for the four cans of lemonade, one can of grape juice, and one bottle of ginger ale, she had been pretty irritated. When she came down from her office and there wasn't a single cold drink in the house, he had walked away with $2.11. On top of that, he was pretty sure Scott had kept the $5 bill they'd earned. Well, what was Evan supposed to do? Ask Scott to turn his pockets inside out? Evan hadn't kept track of the sales, so he couldn't be sure. Why'd I do it? Why'd you do it? Why'd you invite that jerk over for a lemonade stand, shouted Jesse. And how come you wouldn't let me play? You're the one who's mean. You're such a show-off, said Evan. You always have to let everyone know how smart you are. I wasn't showing off. I was just trying to have a little fun. Is that against the law? You won't do a lemonade stand with me? Then I won't do a lemonade stand with you. I'll do one with my friend Megan instead. You cannot be her friend. You cannot be her friend, shouted Evan. Why not? Because you're a little kid. You don't even belong in the fourth grade. And because you're just an annoying show-off pest and no one likes you. The words felt like disgusting spiders running out of his mouth. They were horrible. But it felt so good to get rid of them. Then Evan saw Jesse's lip tremble. Uh-oh. Jesse was a howler. She didn't cry often, and she didn't cry long, but when she did, it was loud. Mom would come down from her office. Evan would catch the blame. Unfair. But Jesse didn't lose. Let loose. Instead, she stood as tall as her running height would allow and said, Megan likes me. She invited me over to her house tomorrow. 
we're going to make another lemonade stand and earn twice what we did today. Oh, that was it. She was going to ruin everything, show him up right in front of Megan, even before the school year started. Make Megan think he was just some stupid loser who couldn't even beat out his baby sister at a lemonade stand? Evan bowled over. I wouldn't count on it, Juicy, he said. Jesse hated that nickname, and Evan only used it when he had to. I am going to have a lemonade stand every day until school starts, and I'm going to earn a hundred bucks by the end of the summer, enough for an iPod. Oh, please, like you could even if you wanted to, said Jesse. Megan and I already made twelve bucks each day. We could have a hundred dollars like that. Jessie snapped her fingers. And then what, said Evan, you lock it up in your lockbox and save it till you're 50 years old. You're the biggest miser on the planet. Jessie stiffened up. Her mouth made a funny O. But then she put a hand on her hip and smirked at Evan. For your information, I'm going to make a $100 donation to a charity. Evan snorted. You're right. What charity? There was a long pause, and then Jessie said, as smooth as whipped cream, The Animal Rescue League. Megan and I already talked about it today. You don't even like animals, said Evan. Everybody likes animals, shouted Jessie. And I'm going to give them a hundred dollars, so you can't ever call me a miser again. I hope I never have to talk to you again, shouted Evan. Hey! A sharp voice called from the stairs. Mrs. Tresky had a pencil stuck in her hair and a worried look on her face. I could hear you two all the way in the attic with the air conditioner on high. What's up? Evan looked at Jessie. Jessie looked at Evan. They had taken a vow, a spit vow. Ever since Dad had gone, they had vowed not to fight in front of Mom. It made her sad, sadder even than when Dad had left. Nothing, said Evan. Nothing, said Jessie. Mrs. Tresky looked at the two of them. Come on, out with it. What are you two yelling about? It wasn't a fight, Mom, said Evan. We were just joking around. Yeah, said Jessie. We were goofing. Sorry we got you out of your office. Mrs. Tresky looked at both of them with her laser eyes. Jessie hung the dish towel on the oven handle and fiddled with it until it was perfectly straight. Evan bent over the casserole pan and scrubbed as if his life depended on it. He scrubbed so hard, his elbow bumped the fruit bowl. A cloud of fruit flies rose into the air and then settled back down. Oh, God, said Mrs. Tresky. Would you look at those fruit flies? Her shoulders slumped. All right. Well, I'm going back up. Can you guys handle showers and reading? And then I'll be down to tuck and turn off the lights. Sure, Mom, said Jessie. No problem, said Evan. Mrs. Tresky disappeared upstairs. Jessie turned to Evan at the sink. Let's make a bet, she said. Whoever earns $100 wins, and the loser has to give all their earnings to the winner. Evan shook his head. Not fair, he said. You've already got money saved up. That money doesn't count, said Jessie. We'll start with today's earnings. And it's all got to be from selling lemonade. No mowing lawns or sweeping out the garage or anything else. Uh, what if neither one of us makes $100, said Evan, not liking the sound of this deal. Then whoever makes the closest to 100 wins. And even if we both make over 100 whoever makes the most money wins the bet. When do we count the money? asked Evan. Jessie thought about that. Sunday night, right after the fireworks. She looked straight at Evan. Huh? What do you say? Evan didn't like bets. He really wasn't that into competition. He loved to play basketball and always gave it his all, but winning or losing, it didn't make much difference to him. He just liked to play. But this, this was different. This mattered. If he didn't beat Jessie at this bet, if he couldn't win against his little sister in a lemonade war, then Evan thought of school, the school year stretching in front of him, 
it was all over. He might as well just give up on everything right now. It's a bet. A hundred bucks by Sunday night. Winner takes all. He shook his wet hands over the sink, dried them on the dish towel, and gave Jesse his most menacing look. You better pray for mercy. All right, so that's it for Chapter 5, Competition. Hopefully you continue to read The Lemonade War um, or follow along and watch our videos. I hope that you guys are staying safe and enjoying this extra time with your family. We miss you, and we can't wait to see you again.